Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of 30 Minutes with Andy. I'm so excited to have you guys here. Um, coming out of my skin today, uh, one of my, somebody that I've, I'm getting to know over the last several months, um, I was chasing him down like crazy at Family Reunion in California, and I never got my hands around him, but Press McKissick is with us today. Hey buddy, how you doing? Hey Andy, I'm great. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for taking 30 minutes out of your day and spending it with our market center and other local people around uh, Alamance County. So we're excited to have you and pour into us a little bit. So real quick, um, you give them a high level view of you, your real estate career, your life, start to finish, married, whatever you want to pour onto us, light us up and kind of tell us where it all started and where you, what got you here today. Awesome. Well, again, thank you for having me. Um, and hello, everyone. Good to good to see everyone on the the Facebook world. Um, uh, so my story goes back. I tell everyone um, I joined Keller Williams in 1992. Um, I was basically born into the company. They wrapped me up in a KW loincloth and then fed me Kool Aid from a bottle, uh, <laughs> basically from day one. So I had um, the pleasure of if you are in KW, then you probably heard of the names Jim and Linda McKissick, and those are. Uh, my parents, I claim them, they claim me, um, and I'm the youngest in our family of four. And so um, what's amazing about my story, I, I have sort of maybe a unique perspective than most people do um, inside of KW. Um, you know, a lot, our, our industry turns over a lot, and we've grown massively over the last, what, 10, 12 years? Sure, yeah. Um, and so when you look back at, uh, you know, Jim and Linda's story, like they came into K KW at a time when they were $600,000 in debt. And so our family was not in a good place um, financially. And I got to see as the youngest of four, I got to watch them join KW, start a team, um, start figuring out this thing called profit share. Uh, Jim and Linda were one of the first teams to ever seventh level. Um, a lot of people don't know that inside of the real estate industry. Uh, Linda was the first person in her city to have an, even a, an assistant. So a lot of firsts in our family of, um, you know, and I got to see that while they were growing up. So I watched their financials go from $600,000 in debt to them building a team, seventh leveling, open market centers, uh, buy a KW region, um, figure out this thing called profit share. Right. Um, and, uh, and so their financials go from $600,000 in debt to um, financially free. And as the youngest in the family, I got to see that happen. And so it's interesting, you know, my, um, a lot of my siblings, they went out and did other things. Uh, and I got to see Jim and Linda's life inside of this company called KW. And I looked up and I thought, wow, you know, I was probably 10 or 11, 12 at the time when their life really changed. Um, and I remember looking at that thinking, I want a life like that. Like they have freedom, they have options, mm -hmm. like to go on amazing vacations and things like that. So um, my unique perspective is the the blessing that this company brings on those who choose to uh, spend a career here and who say yes to opportunities. Yeah. And, and so that's really, that was my introduction to KW. So I went to, uh, you know, I went to Baylor University, went to, did the whole college thing, uh, majored in, uh, majored in sales. Um, and for a minute there thought maybe I was going to go a different route into, um, business to business, uh, technology sales, um, kind of had a, one of those moments in your life where you look up and you're like, okay, I've got two paths. Like which route do I want to go down? Um, and I married my amazing uh, wife, Anna, um, our last year in college. And, um, we just ultimately decided to get into real estate instead of go down a different route in corporate America. So at the age of, I was probably 23 and she was 20. Um, I, I got my license at 18, but Anna got her license her last year of college. And we moved back to Denton, Texas um, and uh, lived there for about a month and then moved into our first house in uh, Flower Mound, Texas. Um, and instead of joining the McKissick Group, uh, which at the time was in the process of being sold uh, from Jim and Linda over to my uncle, um, we went out and started our own real estate team. Mm -hmm. In a city where, you know, all of our friends are just graduating college and we we know uh, we basically know no one and we don't have any like you would think we'd have Jim and Linda's database, but we didn't because Brad had uh, who they were selling it to had that book of business yeah. so really started from scratch. Um, and my wife, Anna, was rookie of the year her first year in real estate Nice in an office of about 450 agents. Uh, we sold about 24 houses uh, our first year. 
um, started building a team, did it the wrong way, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, which, which, ne which never happens. Yeah, it never happens. Never. Right? Uh, no one's stories like that. Um, yeah, we were like, you know, we hired an ISA first. That was a terrible idea. So we did all the wrong things um, and uh, continued to grow. Um, and then ultimately, um, uh, I stepped into a role with uh, within Jim and Linda's organization and um, that opened up a path to become the regional director for what we call the Ohio Valley region, mm -hmm. which is the region that our family owns. That's awesome. So about four and a half years ago, it's actually almost five, it'd be five this summer. Um, I moved my family and my wife uh, who, who moved into an assistant team leader position at the time when she, uh, she got out of production, moved into market center leadership. And then when we, we moved up here, we had about a, a two month old and moved my whole family up to Ohio. Um, and I've been the regional director in this region now for the last four and a half, almost five years. Um, and so we've had a lot of change, a lot of transition, moving from agent to leadership. Sure. And it's been an amazing ride. This company, um, I've watched I've watched it benefit my family, my parents' life. And now I'm watching it uh, be the recipient of both people that I'm, you know, my good friends and then also uh, and in my life as well. Yeah. So it's sounds like it's going pretty quick, you know, and uh, your growth and um, it's it's fun to watch. And it's one of the when I started here, May will be the completion of year one for me. And you're you and Linda, you guys were some of the first names that I heard. And of course, I was I was a part of um all the profit share masterminds and things towards the end of last year, I'm like, golly, I just have to hear, I need to hear these. We have to hear these people more. Um, Cause it's stories like yours that it's, that's KW all the way through and through, you know? And, yeah, um, well, and well, Andy, one of the passions for, for me has been of all the Jim and Linda own rental, they own a lot, they got a lot of businesses. And one of the ones that really struck me was profit share. Yeah. And so I have spent the last, um, five years of my time in KW diving deep into profit share with Linda because Linda's the person in our company, Andy, that gets the calls from the agents who say, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm 60, 70 years old and I'm tired. Yeah. I, I want to quit selling. I want to stop selling real estate. I want to move to Florida or I want to move to North Carolina. Right. And it's so, so dang beautiful, but I can't because I've only thing I've ever focused on is my active income. And I haven't spent any time on this thing called passive income. Mm -hmm. And so I got to, when I lived in Texas, my office was next to Linda's. I got to listen to those phone calls every single day. And it was one of the things that um, I can see why Linda has been so passionate about it, but it ignited a passion in me of, we have this amazing gift in this company called profit share uh, for those who choose to go after it. So that's been probably one of the biggest blessings for me. It's just been, getting to be around some of the best of the best in this company on profit share. And you, you hit the nail on the head. It's for those who choose to go after it, you know, and it's, it's not, it's truly passive. And that's the thing. That's the, that's the glory in it. it it's, it's truly passive. Um, if you go get it. Um, so let's hit on some people know Nick Avila story. Some people don't. So tell everybody about, how y'all's worlds clash. Tell everybody about Nick Avila. Sure. So uh, most people are usually familiar with the rich dad, poor dad story. Yeah. Um, Nick uh, is like the kid in that story. And he grew up since we were about three years old, we went to a Montessori uh, school together. And so he got to grow up with me. He went on pretty much every vacation with my family. He was at my house every weekend. And he and I both got to see my family's life take off. And then this thing called profit share just completely blow up. Um, but, you know, and Andy, the other thing I didn't tell you is Jim and Linda, just to make this real, Jim and Linda have made over $15 million in profit share in the lifetime they've been at this company. Mm. So when we talk about it's a real opportunity, it's a significant, real life-changing opportunity. Yeah. We're not talking about a couple grand here and there. When we, when you start right. talking about Jim and Linda McKissick, you're talking about multiple seven figures. Yep. And so Nick, Nick got to see like I did. Um, and Nick, again, was the same as me. He was the kid at 12 who said, Hey, I'm, I'm going to get, I'm going to get my real estate license and I'm going to sell real estate and I'm going to invest in real estate. Well, he, so fast forward to, um, you know, right after college, Nick gets into real estate <laughs> and Andy, I know we, you and I have these conversations with agents. They, they're so excited. They think it's one thing they get in and they're like, Oh my gosh, I don't love, he goes, he, he calls me. He's like, press, I don't love selling real estate. Yeah. 
However, I love investing in real estate and I love this company. Do you think I could figure out how to turn profit share into a business like Jim and Linda have? And uh, seeing that he's in my downline, I'm like, that's a great that's idea. That's a Nick. fantastic idea. Best idea you've ever had. Let's go figure. <laughs> let's go figure that out. So, um, so Nick and I go and we we start looking across the company. Who's the best of the best at growing their downline and building their profit share outside of Jim and Linda? We knew their story. Um, the problem is, you know, the way Linda and Jim do it is it's high influence model, and Nick doesn't have that. So I'm like, okay, are there any other strategies that we can use? So we find a guy. His name's Brent Mitchell. And um, if you don't know who Brent Mitchell is, he is uh, the goat of sponsorship at this company, greatest of all time. He has actively sponsored over 2,000 people wow. into this company in his first level. Um, and he has benefited massively from his profit share. And at the time, um, he was actively doing it. And so we got on a call with him and he told us everything he did. And we were taking notes like crazy. And, you know, it's making like, the way he's explaining it, it makes so much sense. It's not about influence. It's about having enough conversations with people. And I'm like, well, anybody can do that. Yeah. So, um, and he stops us at the end of the call, Andy, and he says, hey, just FYI, um, my only ask is that you guys actually do this. And I'm like, what do you mean by that? And he goes, well, I have calls with people all the time because they want to know how I sponsor over 100 people every single year into the company for the last like 10 years. <laughs> right. And um, inevitably they don't they don't go do it and so and the reason for that is because the process is there's a lot of setup on the front end it's technical um you know you're creating a website you're figure you got to figure out you know there's some stuff on the internet you got to figure out in sure, order yeah. to do this model um and so we um so i'm like yes we're committed we're going to do it so we did um and if it's okay andy i would like to show um everyone nick's numbers yes. over the last four years. So hopefully you guys can see my screen. I know Andy's got a tech wizard somewhere on the back end. So, um, so this is Nick. Uh, I'm the better looking one on the left. He's the one on the right. Uh, this was at his wedding, but uh, I want to show y'all his numbers over the four years after we built the system, built the model and went and executed on it. So Nick's first year, um, he recruits 79 people into the company. His second Andy, he recruits 99 he could not have done one more person. I mean, how can you get that close to 100? And <laughs> I don't, I, I, seriously, I would have made it up or something. Anyways, so he gets 99. The next year he breaks the, uh, what I call the four minute mile um, in KW, which is recruiting 100 people in a year. And he sponsors 128. And then um, his fourth year of doing it, he sponsors 163. Wow. And what's even more exciting than this is um, he spent less than 20 hours a week doing it. Now he did treat it more like a full-time job than most people do. Sure. But still look at, I mean, that that's incredible growth. And what's really exciting is this right here. Um, the amazing uh, effect of compounding interest. So you look at his first year and Nick makes about $9,000 in passive income, which, you know, Andy is awesome, but it, that's not life-changing money, right? That's not necessarily changing anybody's life. Yeah. However, the second year he almost doubles he makes 14,960. The third year he over doubles, he makes 32,000. And then his fourth year, he uh, again, almost doubles and breaks the 50,000 um, in a year in annual profit share. And then his lifetime crossed the 100,000 mark. So essentially he goes from zero profit share to over 100,000 in lifetime profit share in four years. Wow. So, you know, you and I have this conversation with a lot of people around profit share and one of the things they always say is well i wish if i had just gotten into keller williams sooner then you know i would be able to have profit share like jim and linda and that's we all know that's not necessarily true but what i love is nick is proof that if you focus on it you can build an incredible and that's truly like you said andy passive income yeah and in this company mark king reminded us last week when i was in austin texas he said there's two the two best times to plant a tree 35 years ago and today. Yep, that's it. And what a lot of people don't realize, Andy, our company turns over about every two and a half to three years. Yeah. We have a highly transient industry. So yeah. there's always a new breed of uh, the next, you know, Jason Abrams and Mark Kings. To <laughs> right, right, right. And the cool thing is, Andy, they all pick one thing, and that's a sponsor. Everybody's got to get sponsored. We are an exclusive club. If 
y'all didn't know it on there in a uh, Facebook world, we are an exclusive club and you have to be sponsored in. Yep. Um, all right. So moving on, you work with the top 1% of profit share performers in our entire ecosystem and agents who are sponsoring anywhere from, let's say a dozen to a hundred plus people in their downlines. So what is the secret, whether, whether it's somebody, and I'm sure it's, it's the same formula, but there's, there's different things involved in each. So what's the difference if I'm at zero and I want to get to 12 as fast as I can. And if I'm at 12 and I want to get to hundred as fast as I can. Yeah. Well, here's the cool thing. Um, like you said, I, I have spent the last five years working with the best of the best, especially the last uh, year that we launched our recruiting sites. I've, I have worked with the best of the best in the company around growing their downlines and building their profit share. And what I have found um, is there's really only two models. And the cool thing is you can do both. You can pick one or the other, but really those are the two models if you want to do it at the highest level. Um, the first model is, uh, we used to call this the Linda McKissick model, but uh, we've we've since changed the name. It's um, now we call it the influential agent model. And the formula for that is relationships plus credibility plus value over time. And that's really the formula that we found. And so it's all about picking the right people, yep. using your credibility to get in relationship with them and build a relationship with those right people. Um, solve for what we call it value, but really it's value gaps. Like what are every, and by the way, we all have them. What are the things that, um, you know, it, the challenges we have in our business that if solved would help us get what we want. Sure. And we all, we all have them in life. And what I watched Linda do over her career is she got in business with the right people. She had real credibility because she was building a great business and she's just a great human being. Mm -hmm. And she helped solve people's value gaps. She brought them to Gary Keller. She brought them the family reunion. She introduced them to this company. And over time, great people joined this company and named her a sponsor. Yeah. And so that's, that's one model. That's the influential agent model. And anyone, again, anyone can do that model, whether you're new in the business, it just really depends on who are the people you want to go after. The other model is what we call the, uh, the recruiting platform model. And so after, um, after we built the recruiting site with Nick, that whole process, um, I started getting what Brent got, which is I started getting the phone calls of, Hey, look, Nick's this new up and comer. He's doing something amazing. How is he doing that? And I started having the phone calls and telling people what to do. And my regional tech trainer, um, Josh Boatman, uh, is in the office next to me. So he got to hear all those conversations. And I started experiencing what Brent experienced, which is people would uh, listen to what I said, but they wouldn't go out and do it because it's technical to go build. Right. And it takes time on the front end. So Josh one day walks in and he says, hey, Press, um, I think I can build what you've done with Nick, but for other people inside of KW, do you think that's something like, would you want to do that? And I'm like, yes, I'm tired of having calls with people. Like if you can, if you're telling me that you can help me build a race car to help people grow their downlines, then absolutely. So um, I, lock, I tell everyone, I locked him in a closet for six months. He went and built the thing. And then he came out um, beard and all and presented me <laughs> with um, what we call our, our recruiting sites. And so um, we've been running that for about a year now. And we thought maybe, you know, I, there's only, not everyone gets profit share, especially those who are not with us. Once you're with us over time, the more you learn about it, and the more you understand passive yeah. income, the more you're probably gonna get turned on by it. But there's only so many people that are really focusing on growing their downline. So Josh and I always joke, we're like, and Linda, we're like, maybe 20 people will wanna do this. Uh, well, we have over 300 people in the company wow. that now partner with us and use our recruiting sites. Um, and multiple of them passed 100 people in a year. Um, I've got a couple that um, uh, Chad and Carrie, which I think they're from the Carolinas as well, um, uh, Carico or Carico, um, they recruited a 50, uh, 44 people last year. Wow. And I think they're over 51 now. So I've got, it's so cool to see all these people who are following in uh, Brent and Nick's footsteps and now going after their unfair share of profit share. And many of them became the regional um, uh, top recruiting associate. Uh, and even the person who became the number one of the whole company, uh, Jules Presta, she uses our platform as well. So it was really fun. We we got to learn a lot from some amazing people last year who decided and went all in on profit share. That's awesome, man. 
So what, um, just re rapid fire questions, like, cause I like to know how people who have more tenure than I have and have seen more than I have. I just like, I like hearing how you guys think. Um, so what's next for press, press McKissick? Like, what do you, what do you see not only in just KW, but what do you see in the life of you and your wife in the next five years with what you guys have started the process of building over the last few years? You know what? That that's a great question. Um, being, a, I'll, I'm going to give you a real honest, transparent answer. I'm 31 years old, and um, being at 31 is a is a real like in your 20s. This is was me. I was I've always been the young guy who like I'm in the room that that I'm in and people are like, Oh, you're so lucky to be in the room that you're in at 20 or whatever. And now I'm at 30 and I'm not the youngest anymore. There's other people younger than me. So part of what I really want to do is take what I've been given the blessings I've been giving and give them back. Yeah. And so I'm really excited to be able to turn around and pour into anyone who will listen about what this company does to change lives. That's awesome. And I, I'm a 1000% believer and, and I bleed KW Red. And so for me, it's, um, I watch this company change people's lives. I watch people go from no passive income to passive income. I watch people go from no income to life-changing income. I've watched people go from no leverage to tons of leverage and time back. And when you experience that, you cannot help. But when, I mean, Andy, I know it's probably why you do what you do. Like you, when you experience it, you can't help but want to do that with other people. So a big thing for me is about figuring out how I do more of that um, you know, I'm real involved in our region and I will continue to always be. And so, uh, that's going to play a big role for me is pouring into the lives of real estate agents in Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky. Yeah. And then the others in the company who, um, who are open to it. So, and then on top of that, the recruiting sites, um, we're working on some cool stuff with like scaling that into market centers, um, and providing some cool things there. Yeah, and that's then cool. um, I also, uh, Linda and I have a vision. We want to help um, a thousand people in KW. So we're going to, we're going to keep going after that and, uh, helping people just go build incredible passive income streams in this company and then leverage that money to go do, you know, go take family vacations or go build, go buy rental properties with it. And then you start really compounding your, your passive income when you take passive income to go build more passive income. Yeah. Um, most influential book you have ever read you can't oh, say the bible I can't say the bible that's a that would probably have been my choice um uh you know what the two that have impacted me the most um actually do i have it over here no i think it's in another room right now one's called doc um i the, my other love andy is marketing yeah. i love it's part of one of the secrets of our recruiting sites is the marketing we built oh into yeah it. sure and I love marketing. I love psychology of sales and things like that. So um, Russell Brunson is a huge um, uh, uh, mentor of mine from a you know marketing standpoint. I listen to everything he does. I learn from him because he's brilliant and he's also just a good person. Um, so he wrote a book a series called uh, Dot Com Secrets, Expert Secrets, and then the third one is Traffic Secrets. And those three books are life changing. Um, I'll lump that into one. And then the other one is going to be Gary Keller. Anything he writes, uh, that man is my, uh, authority and, uh, on anything real estate and business related. So those are my, those are my two picks. Yeah, it was fun. To, it was fun to spend some time. You know, we were in, um, Austin, Texas with, you know, 65 other CEOs there in Austin with Mark King for five days and Jen Lewis and Gary comes in for a half hour and, he drops knowledge and um, Jason Abrams came in and he dropped knowledge and it was, it was an incredible, incredible four and a half days. So, um, I know, man, I cannot thank you enough for your 30 minutes. Anything I can do for you? No, you just keep, you know what, here's what you can do. We have a, we have Linda and I in our profit share stuff. We have a saying, it says, um, um, build wealth and change lives. So what I would tell you is go help people build wealth and go keep helping people change lives. Because when you do that, amazing thing about this company is we're all after the same thing. Um, and so I would just tell you to keep on mission, man. Keep doing what you're doing and changing lives. I'll do it, man. I seriously, thank you so much for being on. And anything I can do for you, please reach out to me. You got my cell phone number. Thanks for your time, man. I see you.
You bet. All right. See everyone. Thank and you. And hang on for one more minute and see who's coming up next week. Appreciate you guys. See you next week. Later, buddy.